Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Andre Fedoriv here in Kiev, Ukraine. He's a marketing expert, entrepreneur, and speaker who's developed famous brands in Ukraine and abroad. Andre, cool meeting you again in person. My and, pleasure. Uh, we had a nice banter, nice conversation uh, when I was here last week. So great idea to talk more because you have a lot to say. And from the outside, from my perspective, you're one of these guys moving Ukraine forward in a very unique, very um, interesting style, let's say. And you got this beautiful facility. This is only part of it, obviously. Um, with a bunch of young people in here, we're actually on a ping pong table. I came in, they're playing ping pong. Feels alive, feels fresh, feels new. And uh, again, I'm constantly like amazed by the environments I get put in here, in Ukraine. Yep. Because again, it's like not what you expect at all. Perceived reality versus actual reality. Ukraine is very far between, you know, the perceived reality is, the perceived vision of Ukraine is pretty bad. The actual reality, whoa, you get some interesting spaces. So your local audience knows you well. You're, you're a big name here that I found out. Um, you have a vlog. People know who you are, less so internationally, um, the English-speaking world. Sure. So while most people know who you are here, little backstory for the rest of us. Who, who are you? What have you done? What are you doing now? Mm -hmm. Trying to keep it short, I introduced myself like a marketing guy. Okay. Uh, because I'm uh, in the marketing area and the marketing field for the last uh, a little bit more than 20 years, but I feel myself more like an entrepreneur. And uh, I think the more right definition of who am I mm -hmm. is that I am a Ukrainian entrepreneur. Uh, for the last 20 years, I was doing as much as I could for bringing international marketing and branding technologies mm -hmm. to help owner run local businesses to become stronger, to sure. become more uh, profitable, dynamic, global, whatever. And uh, we are proud to uh, have taken part in the birth of a lot of Ukrainian leading brands, mm -hmm. thousands of them. And uh, I'm happy to have, um, so we have handled hundreds of projects right. in Ukraine for, for the brands Ukrainians love and uh, see as part of their of their life. We try to bring international vision on design to okay. Ukraine to make it functional, to make mm -hmm. it minimalistic, to make it clean, mm -hmm. to make it really look cool, not right. over decorated. Let's right. call it like that. Sure. And currently, I'm uh, active in uh, three main fields. One is uh, I have my own company, which is called Federif, which is the most wanted uh, marketing agency in Ukraine, mm -hmm. marketing and design agency or company, let's say, uh, with more than 80 people on board in-house. And mm -hmm. uh, we try to mix business with creativity, with art, with technology to really come up with some kind of projects mm -hmm. which bring change to, to big companies and to the market. So we are not now really interested in just packing the business or just promoting the business. My biggest challenge now that we are the change makers mm -hmm. and we use brand as the instrument to kickstart some kind of huge changes inside the huge companies to really question or I would say uh, even disrupt some kind of uh, old fashion or old school model or product or service model or retail model and to really reload the business, rethink mm -hmm. the business through rebranding and through re understanding that consumer have changed and the environment have changed and that things are uh, crucial to do as fast as possible. Right. With this model working, we are now opening an office in Berlin. And uh, my big challenge now is uh, to turn that local success, which we have in Ukraine and CIS, right. because we also have clients in Moldova, in Belarus, in Kazakhstan, in Uzbekistan. Uh, and we have some, uh, some projects we have done in Germany, in Swiss, in Norway, and uh, even Saudi Arabia. But this is not the huge piece of our cake. We really mm -hmm. want to go global. 
as a global, I would say, global Ukrainian creative and marketing company. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to build a company of about four, five hundred people mm -hmm. present in uh, major, let's call it creative cities. Uh, because Berlin is our only first step. We want to be present in CF. We want to be present in New York. We want to be present in London. We want to be present in Dubai, maybe Shanghai. Things like that. And wow. this is the plan for five, seven years because we really think that our model is kind of unique because uh, it's not a traditional agency because we unite under one roof creative execution right. with business consultancy. And we focus not on uh, traditional corporations, mm -hmm. but we focus on the owner run businesses. We call these owners fathers mm -hmm. who are the core creators, who are the creative leaders who manage their own business. And we really want to help them to add more soul to this business, to add more emotion in mm -hmm. order to get more margins. Is that your angle? You try to add more soul, more feel yep. in a brand? Yes. We but believe that minimalistic. We believe that uh, brand is emotions mm -hmm. and uh, brand is a margin. People are ready to give you, to pay you for having this kind of emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's why you cannot split. Is it functional? and mathematical model, or it's a customer journey mm -hmm. when customer is looking for emotions and mm -hmm. things like that. This is biggest part of my life. Also, this year we have launched the online educational project, which is called Super Ludi, something like Superhumans, right. where we try to discover, I would say, research, discover, and share what is the secret of success of 1% of the most successful people. Because what we found that the, if people are really successful, they always have some kind of balance, meaning that they are successful in business, they have happy mm -hmm. family, they look fit, they look happy, and something is different with them. Mm -hmm. And it's not only about the mindset or skills or some kind of uh, tricks or life hacks. It's a mixture and we want to discover that, cover it, right. and uh, let best people in their categories share their experience. So with Super Ludi, it's, is this for Ukraine or is it for the world? I would say it's for the world. We start from the Russian language okay. because uh, a lot of our clients speak Russian and mm -hmm. they, as, I, as I mentioned, they are in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. Sure. And what we see, we see the great demand for quality education, not mm -hmm. for the basic things which are you can hear from any kind of academical resource, mm -hmm. etc., but from very practical. Sure. If people came through that, which people brought from their own subjective experience, which mm -hmm. they have from their pains, from their fuck ups, etc. It's more personal, right. yes. So it's like a friend talking to you, like like an older brother or right. like your father, really giving you the uh, wisdom, not the basic academical stuff you can read wherever. And right. we Do started we started from video format, mm -hmm. but we think it will be a mix. Or we call it an omni-channel education, mm -hmm. when it will be a mix of people getting to know basic information from online courses and lectures, and then getting the cream out of some kind of interactions, communities, etc. Okay. So do you feel there's a great need for this yep. in this part of the world? Do you, do you see that it, there's more of a need here, say in CIS, former Soviet countries, or there's a need everywhere for this? I think that good education, it's a great need wherever. Yeah. And uh, we are thinking about, I have launched my course which mm -hmm. is uh, first on this platform, which is called The Brand Father. Mm -hmm. It's a course for owners of the business sure. on how to create and develop brands. Mm -hmm. But I think that it is so successful in Russian mm -hmm. that it will be great to launch it in English, not, not as a platform, mm -hmm. but as a standalone course mm -hmm. and to work with that for China, for India, for even US, for huge markets. Because I really believe that people uh, lack some kind of very pragmatical and practical view on marketing. Because uh, sure. the marketing by entrepreneur, it's a little bit different from the marketing from a marketing person in the corporation. Right. And that's is our focus. If we ask what can be the best in the world, I think that we can bring entrepreneurial culture for the companies which are run by the owners mm -hmm. and to let the owners really use the power of brands, mm -hmm. not the power of hard sale. 
right. not the power of pushing and uh, pulling the product through the promotion, right. but the power of brand, which is built on emotions and on values. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. So you have huge aspirations, obviously. These are, these are massive goals. Where does it come from? Like, like what, what started all this in you? Were you always like this? Did you start from day one as an entrepreneur? I would say it's a good question because uh, it shows uh, somehow what is Ukraine in means of opportunities. Because mm -hmm. now traveling a lot yeah. across Europe, I can say that when we speak about Ukraine, we underestimate the level of innocence it has. Right. It is so underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. And what it means? Oh, it's terrible. Such a bad roads or such a bad uh, restaurants in small cities sure. or know that. But sure. from other side, yeah. which means that almost every segment is not industrial yet. Yeah. And it is a space for people mm -hmm. who really desire to do things, who really believe they can do things. And I can say that if we speak about the role model, uh, now it's growing very fast, and that's what I adore about Ukraine, yeah. that young people who yeah. are 16, 18, 21, 25, treat starting their own business mm -hmm. like a real option. Yes. Because when you see the real numbers, if you start anything here, mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. and you have passion, yeah. and you are, let's say, not really doing big mistakes, right? you have a really great chance to be successful. They're just due because to there's the a lack, level, of, lack of competition. Uh, due to the lack of competition, for, uh, because there's not enough companies, there's not enough entrepreneurs, and because big players uh -huh. are sometimes are afraid of coming to the market, Right. you don't have their money, you don't have their level of competence, you don't have their level of... I don't know, uh, aggression. Sure. It's semi-empty because when people are afraid, etc. Et Ukraine is a young person. If you speak about the country, Ukraine is a teenager as a country. But don't you think it's old too? I mean, uh, Kiev Rus empire started right below us. Low. It's very, Low. very For sure. spot. We have standing. great roots and we have great culture and we have, but if you take a look on Ukraine as a market. Sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 In economical, not in cultural yeah. means. It's very young. So, okay, it's the opposite of the U.S. The U.S. is a granddaddy when it comes to capitalism. Yes. But is an infant when it comes to culture. Absolutely. And here's the opposite. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I was, last week, I was traveling Western Ukraine. Uh -huh. We spent a lot of time in mountains. We spent cool. a lot of time in Lviv. And I can say that if you ask me about what is the main essence of the brand of Ukraine, I would call it wild opportunities. Wow. Wild. So it's like wild west of America in like the late 1800s wild, or something. Wild, wild in a very good meaning. Yeah. Because it's honest. But honest positioning. Why you mean by wild? If you go to the mountains, for mm -hmm. example, not far from Munich. Right. You will never get an opportunity to have your ATV and go through the forest, through the... Because it's completely wild nature. Right. With no limits, no private pro private property and uh, no regulation, nobody. Do what you want. Yeah. yeah and yeah. the nature is so extremely untouched, yeah. uncultivated. Why? Because to get there, it's only 80 kilometers. Sure. But you spent three hours driving your Land Rover because the road is so shitty yeah. that it cuts it from the whole world. So that's a metaphor for Ukraine in a way where there's barriers to entry. People perceive the barriers as being bigger. You have a war going on technically, for right? Sure. And so that's like the road that's yes. difficult to get in. So that keeps a lot of players out of here. Yes. Right? And the same wildness we have in business in means yeah. of some kind of legal regulations, et cetera, et cetera. But you can use it both ways. From one side, you can consider it and say, okay, it's not right. transparent enough. It's not predictable enough. It's not uh, something like that. But huge opportunities, right. huge margins, right. huge, huge 
speed of business development. For example, the growth rate we have in our company, for example, if I compare 2017 yeah. to 2016, it's almost 30%. Whoa. 30% year to year. This year, we will uh, have approximately the same numbers. What it means? That during two years, mm -hmm. my business will almost double. Almost double. But it's, it will definitely double during three years. You don't have this kind of numbers, for example, in Germany. Right. In traditional segments, like consultancy or something like that. Being the market leader, not being the, again, we, we was two people, now we are four people. No. Mm -hmm. being, et cetera. And uh, sometimes uh, companies uh, can, uh, can show great results and it looks like a fairy tale. But when I talk to my people with the same age, maybe, for example, in developed markets like Germany, right. I understand that uh, the entrepreneur as a profession or mm -hmm. as a uh, way of doing things, it's maybe the third option. Because first two options they consider to do in their life mm -hmm. is first, for example, to go to work for a government company to become a civilian person, to do something like for a city administration or whatever, mm -hmm. and have a long life, lifelong guarantee sure. that you will not be fired, you will not be rich. No. But be you, you're, you're good. Yeah. You will be, uh, you will have your food, you will have your dress, you will have your flat, you will have your car, you can go skiing, you can do a lot of good things, right. going through the park, you're on the safe side. Second option, you can go to corporation. And for example, I don't know, to one of biggest uh, global or German corporations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have talked to one guy, to start upper, who yeah. is uh, done in the so-called uh, incubator by mm -hmm. one of the corporation. Sure. And I talked to him and I said, what are your problems? He said, I have two problems which are very strange. And that's what are the problems? I said, first, I am loaded with money. I'm loaded with money. Mm -hmm. My people does not think about efficiency the way startups should think about it. Mm -hmm. Because when we are in a startup mode, mm -hmm. you don't have spare money. Right, right, your, right. your pockets are empty. Yeah. You have to count every penny. You're lean. Because you are, you are so lean. Yeah. Because otherwise you will die. Yeah. Your model will not work. But if you are loaded with money from your incubator, Mm -hmm. And you know that you have, I don't know, 2 million euros when you need 200,000 euros. You mm -hmm. are relaxed. So comfort, comfort, comfort can be the killer. The killer for the, for, for the, and the second thing, mm -hmm. he said, my, uh, the policy of the incubator, yeah. because they want to bring this kind of entrepreneurial culture to the corporation, is following. They insist that 90% of people working in this startup Mm -hmm. are taking from the employees working in the company. Yeah. And these employees all have a guarantee that if the startup fucks up, yeah. if it's closed, they will they have a guarantee they will have a work in this corporation. Oh wow. And he says, my people do not care yeah, yeah. about spending money and about real will we succeed There's no or skin not. In the game. Because for them it's a nice process. It's like a pleasant trip yeah right in ukraine we have a survival mode and for me a lot of times during the last I mean, 20 years uh -huh. it was a question will i live or will i die as a businessman huh because it's only my money i cannot get it from easily from the bank or something like that i can rely only on myself Nobody can help me in the government. Nobody can help me in this. And uh, that's why it's like a wild capitalism. Yeah, Yeah, but I, I went, I looked at your website. It's very interesting. You have your biography there. Mm -hmm. Look like a really smooth, nice road. You didn't put the hard parts in there then, no. obviously. No. So there's been times where you're... you're it's a backside. Yes, okay. for sure. Yes. So there's times where, well, look, you've had uh, war... That does something to a country, look, obviously. Look, Re it's not recessions, a secret. It's not a crisis. secret. Let's take a look. Let's again. I can I can easily put it in a couple of uh, sentences. If you take a look in my biography, positive side. Started yeah. working very early at yeah. 16, at yeah. 1995. Became the successful uh, business journalist. Then in three years, switched to advertising. Started to work in Saatchi and Saatchi. 
then in 2003 and mm-hmm. 2004 started his own business with partners then in 2010 started his own business and then in uh, 2017 went globally and started to go to to, to germany sure. nice right nice but if you take a look on the other side it looks approximately like that 1991 when i was 12 the whole soviet union crashed what it means to my family very simple thing no money <laughs> no money at all <laughs> no money for food no money for gasoline no money no money you you see your mother crying because you don't have food for the weekend wow and it's uh, after living a very like we were always living in prosperity because uh, my uh, parents were, uh, how to say, they were all involved in some kind of art, mm-hmm. like cinema director, director in Philharmonic Society, and uh, it was all well paid in the Soviet times. But then the Soviet, the, the country you used to live in for 70 years is switched off one day, like. I can't imagine. And you can say, okay, care about yourself. No salary, no no organization, no nothing. It's a wild, a wild field. So some organizations say, okay, but we can answer. So you have to survive. You have to right. sell some things to answer. So I started working at 16 years old. Was I happy to do that? Yes, because I wanted to help my parents with money. And uh, you have to understand. What you do? I became a business journalist. I wanted to write about business because it was a hot topic. Right. Nobody understood what was it. And uh, I was studying economy before as a school guy because it was in something new coming to town. Mm-hmm. And it was my passion from the very beginning. And uh, uh, you have to understand that uh, in, uh, for example, Germany or US, when you are 16, you are considering what kind of college to choose. And I was feeding my family completely from 17 years old. My mother, my grandfather, they were all dependent on me. So it was not that I made some kind of little contribution. I started to be the main source of money for my family. How did that make you feel at the time? I mean, stressed. I'm sure I you would were stressed tell, out. But... Grown up. Grown up. Yeah. It, it pushes you up. It makes you, again, uh, confident. Right. From one side, again, you have your confidence. But then, in three years, you start to feel yourself positive. Uh-huh. Okay, I work in the best business magazine. Uh-huh of the country i have enough money to pay my bills i start i first for for the first time ever i traveled abroad for the media tour Uh, so you feel yourself like becoming cool and then one day in september 2000 uh, 1998 you come back to your office and you are stopped by a security guy on the entrance he said you're going to visit this uh, capital magazine it's closed it's it, it, it switched off. Why? You said, why? Uh, because it was a huge financial crisis in uh. August 1998 in Russia. Mm-hmm. In Russia, Russian uh, market, stock market went down. Mm-hmm. So it was a currency crisis, stock crisis, and economical crisis. Okay. It was a complete disaster. Mm-hmm. And uh, the owners of the magazine understood that they will not survive. They have not enough money, liquid to really open, to keep on operations. So there is no Andre. We got to talk about the future of your employment. It was no, just no, no, a no. locked door. They said the door is closed. Come, everybody, come tomorrow. Uh-huh. Uh, we will uh, talk how we proceed. So fifty people collect uh-huh. together in one room, and the owner comes and said, "Look, we were doing great thing. We failed. Sorry. Bye bye." He goes away and you, you say, sorry, we were writing articles for three months in advance. We have a lot of texts which were accepted, etc. For the, for, the, for the issues which will be published in October, in November, etc. Will we be paid for that? That no. You can get your documents here. Sorry, yeah. bye-bye. And wow. people collect together, go to the metro station, sit in a little cafe, have one bottle of cheap cognac, drink uh like we do on the funeral yeah like, okay so this magazine is gone <sighs> and everybody's on the street and you you don't know what to do and uh, i decided that okay i don't want to be a journalist anymore because i mm-hmm. wanted to really do things mm-hmm. i wanted to really do things with my hands mm-hmm. and not to write about other things sure. other people doing things and sure. uh, i uh, had a lot of contacts 
a lot of networking because I was taking interviews mm -hmm. and so I called a um, couple of my of people I knew and said, okay, I lost my job. Maybe you have something. And mm -hmm. I called Sachi and Sachi. And they said, okay, come, come and talk. And uh, because they knew I had a lot of network, right, a huge network, and right. I, I had normal English, which was quite rare at the time. And uh, they said, okay, if you want, you can be a new business director, a uh, new business manager, uh -huh. uh, but you have to get yourself some clients. If you don't have clients, sorry. And I, said, I said, okay. I was uh, not I was saying, I was naive enough to accept it like a proper way of doing things. So I called a couple of guys, came in, so I came back with clients. And they said, oh, go get more clients. And uh, that's exactly what I continue to do for 21 uh, year. I go, wow. for, I go for, for clients and uh, I try to mix, as I mentioned, this kind of technologies with this kind of thing. But then in five years, I left Sachi mm -hmm. uh, and we started our own startup. It was 2004. In the beginning of January, we started. So half a year after we went through the break, break even. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uh, daughter was born in uh, 1st of November. Okay. But in the end of November, Orange Revolution started. And we were proud to have our office at Krishatik, uh, let's say 300 meters from Maidan. Right, right. And what it means, you have a startup, you have your daughter who is uh, not even one month, and you have all the crowd of people standing at Maidan and saying, you should go. Oh. You shouldn't call. And you have one client calls, call, call, calling you and say, look, you are great guys. You are in strategic marketing. But now we are very happy with your project. Let's put it on hold for a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months before this thing finishes. And you say, okay, no problem. But during two days, two day one and second day, all your clients call you. And they say, okay, sorry. On hold, on hold, on hold, on hold, on hold. And Once the Yushchenko came out in the streets, everyone stopped. Yes, you say, Everything. okay, we have to see what will it go. Where will it go? Because is that the feeling when there? Well, there have been a few revolutions you lived through. Once that, once that momentum start, starts, everyone wants to stop in business. Yeah. Okay. Especially strategic projects. Yeah. Let's go. Because we are in strategic consultancy. Yeah, sure. We, we work about the long term things, etc. etc. Yeah. So main projects yeah. are put on hold. They yeah. do not cancel it. But said, let's make a little hold. And then we play it again. So what do you do with your staff then? Good question. We keep them. But again, this is a question. You understand, your children are at home, you have very limited cash, you have already 15 people, so you negotiate some clients, can right. you pay us at least something, you negotiate with your staff, can we pay you a little bit less, but we have to survive. So, And you really hope that it will be okay. Are you watching the news every day at home, like what's going on? Come with on, our you're all the time in so it's not i come in the evening and so what's going on so i hear the news from the window because <laughs> everything i can see from my window from the office you don't wow. have to watch it and everybody is sitting in the internet and uh refreshing the news every five minutes wow and your clients come to you from the street because they want to visit maidan and have some hot tea because you are in the center and a great place to go to toilet and uh it's it's a very strange mood or mode, uh, yeah. mood and mode, let's yeah. say, for, for, for an office to be in. But okay, everything worked perfectly and we started to go better uh, after that in 2006, it seems to me, 2005, and then four years in a row, five, six, seven, eight, great growth, uh -huh. great growth, like 30, 50% per year, wow. even more. So you feel yourself, wow. So during these five years from the very start when we were 15, in 2008, we were 170 people from scratch, from nothing, mm -hmm. like a startup. And you feel yourself, I'm a great guy. I'm right. a great manager. I'm, I'm so at that very time, though, are you thinking like this is going to go on forever? For or sure. do you know that no, no, look, no. it's going to cycle at around? At that moment, we believe that everything is okay. okay. No, So we are done. Right. So every bad things, all the bad things stay behind us. Right. Yes. And uh, it was uh, 2008 when we all crashed the same wall. All yeah, the yeah. world. Yeah. 
and they have the story again and our revenue fall 80 percent and they uh, came back from being the strategic visionary ceo or whatever to jump into the very center of their operations. And I was living in the office, mm-hmm. working 24-7 for almost a year and a half to make this business survive. And then... How many employees did you go down to? It was... We lost half of our business. Okay. Let's call it like that. Okay. And uh, But we stayed profitable. But we lost half of our business. But uh, it was a victory. It was a victory at that time. Because a lot of people just lost all the business. Yes? So you got to be a warrior here to stay, stay in business a long fighter. time. fighter. We call it a fighter. Yes. Uh, I call it business Buddhism. <laughs> when when you don't attach yourself to what you have today. Right, right. Yes. And um, uh, the question is that uh, you never know. Yes. And uh, after that, I was so exhausted. I was so, how to say, mm, you, you, you come back to the essence of things. When you are so pushed with all the drama and stress, etc., and you can easily ask yourself when you are done, when, when you have, so we, we, we were profitable in 2009. So next mm-hmm. year, and when we finish the year and they see the PNL and we are profitable and as a general manager, I'm done. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm okay. And so next year it looks much more easier. And they come to my shareholders and they said, okay, you know what? I don't want to continue. Because uh, I was uh, managing the huge, as I said, it was a lot of administrative work, etc. Right. And it was a lot of shareholders, etc. I said, I want my own business, uh-huh. fulfilling my own uh, vision of and my own values mm-hmm. on what I want to do. Sure. I want it to be small. I want it just to pay my bills. Uh-huh. And uh, maybe it will be 10, 15 people. But I want to have the little sport car like a little company which is easily managed. I don't want to be the boss of the train. Right. right. So I started Federif at that time. And uh, I believe that we will stay small. So we were growing again. And uh, during first three, four years, we were almost 40 people. We was growing again like this, Mm -hmm. uh, very strong, because we made a strategic solution that we will focus on our Moscow market. On the mm-hmm. Russian market, because okay. it is uh, very close. It's 55 minutes flight. And uh, we have at least 75 years of mutual mutual culture. So we grew up watching the same movies, listening to the same uh, music and right. reading the same books and speaking the same language. Right. It's not so far Did it feel away. like a big divide going, let's say, when you went to Russia? Did I it feel that much it different? Was, it was different already. And yeah. uh, I was very clear about what are the differences. Yeah. There were like key differences in uh, consumer behavior and et cetera, et cetera. But it, is, it was still manageable. Yeah. Manageable. And we got, my big success was that for 2013, which means we got approximately only 45% of our revenue coming from Ukrainian clients, meaning that more than half was going from Russia and other markets. So I really was proud that I started to build really international yeah, company, yeah. Uh, that we are not really local selling mm-hmm. to our neighbors. Yes, sure. But then one day, the next revolution started. And uh, you see that uh, things are getting quite worse Mm -hmm. and uh, you see all this terrible tragedy going on at Maidan right and uh, I was involved in one uh, charity foundation uh, helping children of people killed during Maidan Uh we wanted to collect money and to distribute it to the to the families sure we were successful in that Uh, but uh, I was uh, it was even before the uh, Crimea, and it was before all the things which happened in Donetsk. Right. And I made my business trip to Moscow, my regular business trip. So mm-hmm. I was stopped in the airport and uh, I was asked to wait. So I waited for maybe five hours in my little room. And then my one guy from police came out and said, you know what, do you need a translation? I said, no, it, that's something like you asked, do you need a translation from English language? Right. He said, no. I said, okay, due to the laws of Russian Federation, you are considered to be the personal threat for security of Russian Whoa. Federation and you are not allowed to enter our country. You will be sent back by the closest plane 
and there is Wait, no. So you boarded the the plane in Ukraine. No, no, no. I, I'm already in, in in Moscow. Okay, you're in so Moscow. So I'm at the border in Moscow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the in the empty airport in Moscow, locked in a room by police uh, to to wait for something, and it's not so pleasant when wow. your freedom is very limited. And said, okay, no problem. And uh, it was six hours before the plane. And mm -hmm. uh, I must admit that uh, the new terminal, and it seems to me it was Sheremetyo, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. is uh, really one of the best airports in the world in means of uh, Horika, in means of uh, catering. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was all big players like Starbucks right. and uh, some other things. And I said, okay, guys, no problem. We wait for the plane. Mm -hmm. I will go grab myself some coffee. They said, no, you are not allowed. You stay here, you are allowed to go to the toilet, to drink uh, water and to smoke. This is three things you can do. All other things you are not allowed. But I said, I'm not a prisoner. They said, yes, but stay here. And they kept me there for seven more hours and just brought me to the plane and sent me back. So I understood that, okay, this is over. And uh, my, What was going on in the ground in Ukraine at that very time? It was a moment when the revolution was uh, already done. I oh, mean, okay. Maidan. So Yanukovych. So Yanukovych wow. crashed, etc. It was a couple of weeks after that, okay. two, three weeks. Okay. But it was at the time uh, when uh, the Crimea was an open question. So it mm -hmm. was uh, some military forces were doing something there, but no shooting, no killing, no referendum, no nothing. Right, like that. Right. It was like this mid zone, yes, uh -huh. mid zone, no war, no yeah. war yet. Yeah. So, but uh, you come and you understand. Okay, you have your clients, but you cannot visit them anymore. And so, literally, half of my business like boom, and they cut your right hand. Please continue. And then in Ukraine, you have the currency crisis when you have your currency rate, exchange rate of eight greenness for dollar. And then in three months, you have 27 for greenness per, per dollar. And some, somehow you have to manage it. And that was the year when we built the hub. So were you at that time, were you like day by day? Were you just in survival mode? We like, I just we need to get through today still, or through day. We are still in survival mode. That's what everybody has to understand. It doesn't this, feel like it in this here. Is, it feels, it this feels is, like but, but you amazing know what? develop mode. Yeah, it's amazing development. We are growing and our business is growing. But when I speak about business Buddhism, what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, internally, yeah. I uh, and I asked, why do you go to Europe? Why do you go to more developed markets? And do you have? They are not so developed. I said, come on, guys. You are living in a VUCA world. Have you turned heard this term VUCA? VUCA. VUCA. No. no, no. This is just uh, how scientists uh, de describe the world we have right now. Okay. Uh, VUCA means vulnerable. Uh huh. Unpredictable, uh -huh. complex, and uh, um, I've forgotten the word ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous, yeah. Ambiguous. And uh, something like unpredictable, turbulent world. Sure. Where, where you are like oh, in this mode. You don't know right. what will be the Boston Dynamics dogs doing in three years and what will be AI or what will be sure. IoT or what will be like blah, blah, blah. everything is changing. And I come and say, you know what? I cannot teach you to be more corporate. Yeah. I cannot teach you to be more structured. Mm -hmm. But I'm bringing disruptive innovations from a disruptive country. For you, turbulence is on and some kind of market changes. It's like a blah, blah, blah. Right. For me, it's my air. I live in that for 20 years. Yeah. Literally, I'm ready to lose everything I have now tomorrow. Seriously. Again, look. If my children will be alive and uh, if I will be in some kind of safe piece of area, sure, it will be more than enough for me. That's why if I can enjoy doing business today and do it as an optimist, hoping that everything will be fine, I definitely do that. So you I'm have, not blocked with this kind of... You have of some advantages then. If you, want, if you want to put your business out to the world, first of all, you have the advantage of living in the turbulence. Absolutely. Right? Because you can yeah. you can pivot and iterate very quickly. Yes. And then you're the Buddhism thing. I like that. Because you're business you're not Buddhism. Atta business, business Buddhism. Yeah. You don't you're, you're not attached. You're, you're not attached. And this is the same with the technologies. 
Sure. You have sure. your business model working today, but be sure it will not be working tomorrow. Or talk to Nokia guys or to Kodak guys about the sustainability of the business, yes, right, and uh, predictability of the business. That's why, that's why I think that. So, uh, you, do you think people here have an advantage? Then? Definitely. Definitely. So, if they think if they've gone down the road long enough in business here, they actually have an advantage. Look, I don't want to look too self-confident, but okay. this year I took my first classes in Harvard Business School. Okay. And uh, this year we did a lot of business meetings with clients from Germany, etc., etc. In Ukraine, we have a very strong uh, problem, which is called uh, that we underestimate our own uh, opportunities, opportunities, yeah. etc. Yeah. We always, in, in generally as a nation or as a, sure. a lot of people, we think, okay, we are the second class, we are right. we are the B class, the C class, the D class. Fuck it, we are the A class in what we can do better. And that's why if we are not from the corporate world, I want yeah. I don't want to pretend to be more corporate than other corporates. Right, but right, right. Speaking about the entrepreneurs jumping it or mm -hmm. diving it to some kind of wild new segments because if you see I don't know blockchain crypto uh, whatever some kind of things which are application related to ecosystems related they are all about disruptions and the rules which are important to be successful in this kind of types of business are the same is to survive at revolution. You have to act extremely fast. You have to take all the responsibility. You have to manage little troops, like little groups, like all sure. this scrum, agile, is all about that. And we, we can do that and it's, it's easy to do. And yeah, we are grateful. Yeah. Because if you have peace today, peaceful sky today, nobody is killed, it's a great day. And you have to really enjoy it because people don't know when they come. Well, you know what I hate in some, uh, it's not only about Ukraine or Germany or US yeah. or whatever. When people are alive, when people are not having some kind of terrible diseases, mm -hmm. when people have uh, quite, I would say, amazing income, allowing them to have their food, to have their dress, to travel, right. to travel. Yeah. And then they complain. Yeah. They said, oh, I'm so this, I'm so that. Come on, guys. Don't be stupid. Because uh, when you have time at the revolution, when every day somebody is killed. Yeah. And the revolution is physically 800 meters from your office. Yeah. And you have gasoline cans, how to say, uh, canisters. Carry, canisters, yes, for gasoline, eat your garage, yeah. full with gasoline, because you know that maybe if some shit starts, you hope to put your children to your car and put that gasoline and you try to reach the border, Right. maybe, wow. because you will know that Definitely in half an hour, all the gasoline station will be turned off. And when you have some kind of extra food, like, uh, I don't know, pasta or butter or so oil or some kind of canned food, just for the backup, because maybe no shops will be open for coming couple of weeks. This is not the agenda you want to have. Yeah. And when you get through that and you come back to normal life, you're extremely happy. Do you feel like you gain something out of that experience? Definitely. You're more agile. Definitely. No, again, you are more philosophic. Yeah. And you sure. and you really learn to enjoy simple things. Well, I think people here in general enjoy they live for the day more because you don't know what tomorrow brings. You know, uh, I can say that in America in Germany this is the same. They live in the same I would say unpredictable environment, even if we treat it globally like a planet. Yeah. You don't know what Trump will do or what yeah, our... But no, but I'd say the American mindset is like, I'm going to sacrifice today so I can have a better day tomorrow. In general. Like, people will put off a vacation for I see. a long time. I see. For okay. work, for work's sake. Okay, I see. Where I think here, because of... You get these cycles that come, right? And it, and it puts you on your toes... And then I think it makes you more alive, in a uh, sense, right? In, like, a, in Ukraine, it's a lot of life and a lot yeah. of, I would say, natural, real emotions. Sure. Meaning that uh, you do not pretend. And people yes, here don't sure. really know well how to play social games. 
to be a good listener, positive, etc. No, yeah. they are straight, much more straight. They like you, they like you, they hate you, they hate you, and yeah. they show it. And uh, in, yeah. uh, I, I really try to live today. And uh, I, I understand it's 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 when you see so much death and so much loss and so much unpredictability, you understand that if you spend five days, for five years or 15 years mm -hmm. working extremely hard to build your capital, yeah, to build your assets, and then to relax, you understand, okay, it might be a wrong strategy. Yeah. Because for 15 years you do that, and then everything is crashed. And mm -hmm. then question, who is silly? That's mm -hmm. why for me the biggest challenge is to keep this balance. Because right. from one side... As I mentioned, we have a long-term vision. Mm -hmm. I have a business plan for seven years. Mm -hmm. We have a very good, I would say, line, how many people, sure. how many clients, how many. It's all calculated. We have all our KPIs. Yeah. So we are not like monkeys who want to uh, have enough drinks and bananas uh, before the sunset. Yeah. And uh, But from the other side, I have to live this day yeah. perfectly. I have to live this summer should be the best summer in my life wow. because I don't know what will be the next summer. Where will I be? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Right. And what do you, what do you think Ukraine is right now in 2018? Like, if you were to um, give an assessment on where you think the business culture is, and it depends what industry, obviously. I think again, I would say something like that. Um, we are really happy. As a company, mm -hmm. to be as the epicenter of changes, yeah, because all big companies who are local, etc., somehow talk to us. Yeah. Some work with us, some yeah. not, but they talk to us. Sure. What I can say that currently, what is my biggest uh, happiness source is that there are thousands and hundreds of companies uh -huh. who are heavily investing, uh -huh. planning the return of investment. Not in three, but in five, seven, ten years. Interesting. People build hotels. People build uh, some kind of real estate development. They build offices. They build districts, IT clusters, etc., etc., etc. So everybody does something. Right. And uh, generally, business of my clients is growing. Huh. If I take if I take eight out of ten categories, mm -hmm. growing. Growing. Great. So we all have problems. Not so enough qualified staff, not so many, but it's growing. Speaking of that. But because, yeah. Because what was the um, interesting thing about the revolution? Mm -hmm. When you speak about that in theory, um, for example, when you think about the Nazi Germany. Yeah. In 30s. Yeah. And you read about all the terrible things which happened there. Mm -hmm. And you you ask yourself, wow, how many people killed? But why have they stayed there? Mm -hmm. Why haven't they left one, two, three, five years before? But being here, I can say it's not so easy to leave because you always have a hope mm -hmm. and you always have your emotional connections. Sure. And if you take my case. Yeah. Okay. As you mentioned, I am quite successful, but locally, mm -hmm. nobody wants me in Germany, US, etc. It's a next fight. Yes. Yeah. Nobody waits for us there. We, they don't need me. Yeah. And uh, it's 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 true. It's the way the things are. And the second thing, I have my relatives, my mother, my friends, my connection, my favorite restaurants, my streets, my memories, my cars, my flats, my my children, my children's school. So. All this life is here. Yeah. And uh, I have my stuff. Yeah. I have 100 people who trusted me. Mm -hmm. And this is not the moment when you say, okay, I feel myself a little scary. I will take my backpack and see you maybe in six months. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you will be like, how to say, um, not cheating them, but uh, like... Uh, betraying they, them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, betray. Betray, yeah. yes. That's the word. And uh, the question yeah. is that uh, when you think about, for example, starting up again, for example, wherever, I'm almost 40. Yeah. You understand that it's a really crucial thing mm -hmm. because here you are, I would say, used to that for the last 10, 15 years, you are in the sea level. You talk to best people in the country, most talented, most famous, most rich, sure. most powerful, etc. You know, all the presidents and uh, 
again, prime minister was in my office and uh, yeah. I know uh, we have done a lot of projects with, uh, again, you feel yourself like a really, and then yeah. who that's, are you there? That, that's exactly, that's a great point because so many people, I write about this sometimes, like, Look, a lot of people in the in Ukraine think U.S. is Hollywood movies. Like, just get there, everything's perfect. Look, U.S. is great for certain things. It's not great for other things. I love certain aspects of my country. But I know one place, one person, one whatever doesn't have it all. So depending on your life, like, you might move to U.S. and have a much better life. You might move to the U.S. and have a much worse life. You might move to the U.S. And, and want to come back. What I'm saying, it's not a black and white. So for a guy like you, yeah, why would you? It doesn't make any sense. I like would it say, wouldn't make any uh, sense to leave. That's why my dream, yeah, my plan is to come and say, I really want to be the citizen of the world. Yeah, for same, me, same. for me, yeah, it means having my core main office business here in Ukraine. Yeah, for me, it's having my home here in Ukraine, sure. but being successful, not like a successful refugee, yeah. but as a, as a successful uh, entrepreneur yeah. in, that mar- in that market. And what I would say that uh, when I was thinking about that, I wanted to play the rules of the markets, to respect them, mm-hmm. to again, etc. But now I understand, okay, if I try to be like a German yeah. or like American, uh I will not be competitive. Huh. I will lose my power of disruption, of freedom, of craziness, of fearless, of being fast, uh, of being, again, crazy, as I mentioned. Right. And uh, that's why our strategy now is uh, to be ourselves. Yeah. And uh, for me, the dream is not to escape, but mm-hmm. really to have uh, balance, to have two legs. One, which mm-hmm. will be here mm-hmm. to make this country better. Sure. Because everything can be done and there is so much yet to be done. Yeah. And I really enjoy that I live in the city where I go to the uh, supermarket with the brand which was developed by us, use the yeah. bank which was developed by us, buy the gasoline at the gasoline station which was completely built by us to go buy some fish in the shop which was designed by us. I said, I really, it's like, it's my flat. Yeah. You know, it's mine. Yeah. I'm the owner here of this city, of this country. I love it and I want to make it better. But I'm not this kind of um, inside the box patriot who mm-hmm. wants to hide in the box, close this book and said, I'm here. I'm hidden. Sorry. I'm proudly pronouncing that I'm from Ukraine. Yeah. In Ger- I don't want to pretend Berliner. No, I'm from yeah. Ukraine. Yeah. But I can teach you a lot. I can give you great examples. And we are brave enough to change things, to, to question things, to to um, do things like that. And that's, that's my agenda for the moment. So what about what about the young people here, though? What would you say to them? You've lived this interesting journey and you came out of the Soviet Union. It's not the Soviet Union now. People have a different set of challenges. And advantages now growing up in what 2018. So what would you say? Like you obviously hire young, a lot of young people here. You've given them an opportunity. But as far as entrepreneurs, being entrepreneurs, uh-huh. what do you suggest? Like what advice would you give? Like, I would how say, do you get it going in Ukraine? I would say I don't need to give them advices. What I see, I see a huge wave uh-huh. of interest towards entrepreneurship coming. Sure. During especially the last three years, huh. it's becoming trendy, it's becoming yep. sexy, it's becoming fashion to be an entrepreneur. It's cool hmm. because, as I mentioned, in Germany, for example, it's a number three option. You have government or corporation giving you a lot of advantages. Uh-huh. In Ukraine, government, question, or you want to do corruption or you get a really poor, poor life. Corporations, there is not so much. That's not so many. And yeah. it's also representative offices. It's not that you can fulfill yourself, like right, whatever. Right, right. That's why it becomes the first option. If you want to lead great life, to get good money, please be an entrepreneur. Open your business, do it and uh, do whatever. And I'm happy that during the last, for example, almost four weeks, so in May and June, mm-hmm. I have given three speeches for yeah. young entrepreneurs and t- in two audiences and one for people from a more business audience, but want, who wants to change. Yeah. And uh, the audiences were 3.5 thousand. 
4.1 thousand, 3.5 thousand. So it's now not the hundreds, thousands of These people. These are young people mostly. Yeah, who wants to, to develop. And that's great. And uh, I believe in that. And that's why we will see what will happen. You never know what will happen. That's why live today, enjoy tomorrow, and everything will be fine. That's maybe... But what, what about this too? I, I've, my um, friend, I, I'm afraid you, you gotta we, run. We, we, oh, I have okay. to run. So let's cover yeah. the last question. And uh, and I have because sorry, my dear friends, but I have to do some business. I have to meet some clients. And <laughs> no more chatting. Okay, I'm going to go quick with this one, and then we'll finish up with what you're working on. Um, I I spoke to someone about this the other day that leadership. Okay, it can come from the top, but it can also come from within. And a lot of people think in the world, actually, in the U.S. or in Ukraine, that some leader is going to come in and save the day. And Good leadership is always a great thing, but the decisions to work hard, to work on your your uh, healthy eating, to work on ac- exercising, education, all these things, these decisions all come from deeply mm-hmm. within, right? What, what do you have to say to that for people here? Like, because I look, Americans, it's in the DNA to sort of hate the government. Actually, mm-hmm. like that's why everyone owns a gun. Because it's actually in the Constitution to, yeah. to stand up and form a militia if the government ever gets out of hand. So what would you say for Ukrainians in that sense where it seems like many people, not all people, but many people expect a leader to have the solutions? It's a good question because uh, we speak about that even with my colleagues who are top managers about this uh, whole theory of uh, holocracy coming to change the hierarchy in corporations and again what is the real level of efficiency in democracy or in some kind of dictator mode yeah and when you have the dictator against the democracy the dictator wins and uh, mr putin shows it quite well right. yes that right. when you have too many too many open discussions and one guy said okay we'll do this and they do that Mm-hmm. And nobody can stop them because they spend time on uh, different uh, trying to find the consensus and uh, to define even the agenda for the meeting before mm-hmm. before they discuss the agenda he's already there yeah mm-hmm. and uh, this is the problem but uh, what I speak about the leadership it's a very philosophical thing I think it's a yeah. choice okay it's a choice everybody have to make mm-hmm. if you want to be successful if you want to be happy it's your choice right because Again, it's a long way. You don't have it as a present. You don't have it for free. Yeah. The price is high. You have yeah. to work hard. You have to lose a lot of op- opportunities, etc. And uh, you're not at the at the dodge every weekend, hanging out, relaxing. Absolutely. You? Yeah. So you sacrifice that. Uh, uh, you sacrifice that. Yes. And this is your choice. Again, yeah. uh, I can say uh, proper eating. Yeah. Also has his pr- its price. Yeah. That's why I can always say: if you are not successful, if you are not happy, if you are not that, ask yourself. For sure, it's uh, sometimes like terrible coincidence, mm-hmm. which bring some kind of tragedies to your life. Yeah, and you cannot manage that. Yeah, but how to react on that? It's only your choice. Right. But eighty percent of people are weak. They lack this internal power. Mm-hmm. They need some kind of external support. Like they need a manager to push them, to punish mm-hmm. them or to motivate them. Mm-hmm. That's why the leadership is there. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm in creative business. And uh, as you have mentioned, uh, if you have seen, uh, we are not like pushing anybody here. We yeah. have, we, we have some kind have of ping pong tables. Uh, like ping pong environment, but we work <laughs> really hard here. Yeah. And uh, that's why I think that uh, it's an organic pro- process. And uh, I think that uh, people are developing, world is developing. There are really a lot of information you can have an access to. Mm-hmm. And it changes everything, changes sure. the way people see religion, people ch- see state, people see themselves, people see whatever. That's why yeah. I, I think that good leaders are always good to have wherever they are in US or in Ukraine, etc. And uh, what I want, I want to finish that is uh, my main, it seems to me the main goal for the leader in Ukraine mm-hmm. is two things. First is to define the vision. Yeah. Because currently we don't have the, uh, say, uh, USP, unique selling right. proposition. Yes, we are going to Europe. Okay, but what we bring there? Right. What we bring? We we, we will be there in three five years. But why why do they want 
Why do they want us? Mm-hmm. What, what is what making us uh, competitive? This is one thing. And uh, second thing, I think um, I think uh, it's about fighting for talents because yeah. I think that uh, for me again leadership and success and even being having some kind of internal passion mm-hmm. it's a synonym of being intellectual mm-hmm. or, or being clever because mm-hmm. it's some kind of decision sure. how you want to behave yourself yeah. because you have to have some kind of plan mm-hmm. some horizon for your planning mm-hmm. and uh, if you are living in a short term mode completely mm-hmm. and you don't have a long term picture you stay very local and you don't fight and you eat and uh, you live on beer and fat and and it's right. it's a bad strategy for right, life right, right, let's right. say if you have a proper life strategy you become much more flexible and sometimes you can take a decision okay maybe poland is not so bad also bad mm-hmm. option for for taking and opportunities which are there or germany and these countries do the great job yeah. i can say and uh, you cannot blame them on that sure and the government of berlin impressed me with yeah. the level of support they provided us uh-huh. and the level of interest they show to our company to really help us set up a business there wow and uh, in ukraine in ukraine they do nothing and i would say the government of berlin is quite open that they want me to move there hmm. they are it's not a hint but they say if you decide we help you with everything and why do they want you there so bad because they want talented people to support the strategy of berlin mm-hmm. as a creative and startup right, capital right. of europe right, and right. they have the filters mm-hmm. how they judge the companies they want in berlin yeah that's the strategy yeah they have analyzed our company it's not so hard you, you know well, the, the Germans website great at planning etc and they see oh this is the type of the company we want to be in berlin yeah that's why we have the option z or option B or option that for helping plan. Yeah. If you need to connect, please, this is a local, uh, this, 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 and that, and they do the homework. Yeah. Ukraine, this is not the agenda. No. This is not the agenda. And mm-hmm. the, for me, the question, when the leader comes, mm-hmm. for sure we have great land. For sure you can always uh, focus on agriculture and, I don't know, uh talking that okay ukraine is so nice we have such such a pretty pretty ladies here but mm-hmm. it's so terrible if you look only for agriculture and ladies yeah it's a complete fuck up <laughs> it's a complete fuck up yeah, yeah. because you have to think about different things yeah and i'm sure they exist and i'm sure that the great leader will come and open an eyes for the great opportunities we have and uh, the things which you can do in ukraine which inspire you and which are wonderful yeah because the main ingredients of the people are here and an attitude and yeah. uh, the world is not perfect but no. if you are alive you have to go forward this is the last say thing i want to say thank you so much for your conversation thank you Andre. i hope some people hear us in canada in us and uh, please don't be afraid of our country come do your business do your travel enjoy and uh welcome to ukraine and andre Bye-bye. one last thing where can people find you at what's your instagram federif.com you can go for federif.com they can also use youtube and uh, type federif f e d o r i v vlog and yeah. uh, they can also look for federif on instagram andre a n d r e y n you see i'm bad in spelling <laughs> sorry for my bad english yeah bye bye